Immediately following the NTSB board meeting, we set out to address each of the 16 recommendations. Within 24 hours of that meeting, I assembled Metro's senior leadership team and have met with them regularly since then to begin developing a plan to act upon each and every recommendation as quickly as possible. I'd like to walk through the actions that we're taking in response to each of the NTSB recommendations. First, with respect to the recommendations for the Metro Board to revise policies and processes to further codify and improve safety oversight of Metro, staff is ready to implement your direction on a revised policy statement on board's oversight of system safety. We are also prepared to join you in amending our mission statement to reflect the board and management's renewed commitment to safety. Additionally, as you previously directed, the Chief Safety Officer will report monthly to the board on our safety progress to date, including responsiveness and compliance with safety oversight agencies such as the NTSB. The NTSB made two recommendations intended to reduce the potential parasitic oscillation in track circuits. We've already replaced all the modules at 34 locations in the system. We are in the process of replacing eight more and are planning to replace modules at the remaining 61 locations. We will soon present a full expedite replacement plan to our board. With respect to inspection of track circuit modules, beginning in November, we will increase the frequency of our inspections on audio frequency track circuit modules within the rail system from annual to quarterly inspections. We will continue the loss of shunt review twice daily until the testing is completed on the real-time alert system and we can implement it. In response to a recommendation to improve the dissemination of safety-related information, we have developed a cross-functional committee to develop procedures that ensure clear communication and document receipt, and document receipt of all technical bulletins and other safety-related information. We will begin to put these procedures in place within the next 60 days. The next recommendation from the NTSB addressed the need to remove the unnecessary communication equipment along the wayside that may interfere with automatic train control system. We are currently working to identify all locations throughout the rail system where unnecessary wayside communication equipment exists and are developing a plan to disable and or remove it. We anticipate beginning the first phase of removal by December. There are two recommendations related to the automatic train control system to conduct a complete analysis of foreseeable failures and to address the findings of that analysis. At the board's direction, we have retained an independent firm who can perform a rigorous safety analysis of the automatic train control system and provide recommendations to address potential failures identified as a result of the analysis. We are presently working to develop the scope, schedule, and budget for the project. The NTSB also recommended that cable insulation resistant testing become part of our periodic maintenance requirement. A schedule is being developed to perform nightly cable insulation resistant testing as part of a larger comprehensive cabling maintenance review. We will provide the board with additional information on the testing schedule. The NTSB recommended that we, in cooperation with the Tri-State Oversight Committee, address the findings of the March 4, 2010 FTA audit. I'm pleased to report that we have submitted our initial response from the recent FTA audit to the Tri-State Oversight Committee in April and provide an update on our activity to the top and the FTA's Office of Safety and Security last week. We will submit our status report to the FTA and the top before the August 30th deadline. An additional recommendation was that we review data from onboard recorders and trains and the advanced information management system. Senior staff meets monthly to review data on reliability, maintenance, and engineering, and then to develop trend analyses. We will include a review of the data from onboard recorders installed in rail cars in these meetings. Local 6A9 union representatives have agreed to participate in the meetings as well. The NTSB recommended the establishment of a non punitive safety reporting program to collect incident reports from across Metro and share the review of those incident reports across the entire organization. With regard to this recommendation, as was already noted, the Board of Directors took the first step by strengthening the authority's whistleblower protection policy. Management has also established a safety hotline for employees with anonymous to report safety concerns. But as you noted, we want to encourage employees to further. We want to encourage employees further 
and ensure that they identify and report problems. To that end, we have initiated discussions with Local 689 to establish a procedure and program for the reporting of near misses without punitive consequences. The NTSB made two recommendations related to the evaluation of risk and the resolution of corrective actions. In September, Metro's Executive Safety Committee, which was previously established as a Standing Safety Committee, will re review hazard identification and hazard management. This process will be included in the system safety program plan. Further, as part of the monthly meetings, the executive committee will review safety audits, open corrective action plans, and take the necessary steps to adequately address the corrective actions in a timely manner. The NTESB recommended that Metro remove the 1,000 series rail cars from service as soon as possible and replace them with rail cars that are comparable to the 6,000 series rail cars in terms of crash worthiness. As, you, as was noted before, a few weeks ago, our board of directors approved the contract to replace the 1,000 series cars, which are the oldest cars, and the fleet with new generation 7,000 series rail cars. The new cars will be equipped with advanced crash worthiness technology. We will also examine the service and safety impacts of removing the 1,000 series cars from service or other operational alternatives and report back to the board. The final two recommendations call for ensuring that the lead married pair rail car set in each train has an operating onboard event recorder and that we develop a maintenance program for our onboard recorders. We're developing a plan to equip the 4,000 and 1,000 series with onboard event recorders. The 2,000, 3,000, 5,000, and 6,000 series cars are already equipped with event recorders. Enhanced maintenance criteria of the onboard event recorders will be incorporated the preventive maintenance and inspection process beginning in November. In the upcoming years, Metro faces a number of challenges and we appreciate the Metro Board has already dedicated $30 million over the next three years in our capital budget to begin addressing the NTSB recommendations and has retained a team of experts, as noted before, to examine and make recommendations on WMATA's safety culture. Metro staff is ready to meet these challenges in cooperation with the FTA, the NTSB, the Tri-State Oversight Committee, and our other safety partners and under leadership of the Metro Board. Thank you. We know that there are a lot of people that work um, either in a paid capacity as frontline employees or in volunteer capacity uh, on service um, to Metro who do care about safety and who do want to make the system safer. And at the end of the day, I think the question that's the right question to ask is not what could you have done, but what are you going to do? And I think that what we heard today is a, is a great step in the right direction of we know uh, what your commitment is and we're hearing it. And Mr. Charles, thank you so much for um, your responsiveness uh, to our recommendation. Um, we're very heartened to hear that um, someone sitting in the boardroom listening to our deliberations would go back and uh, begin immediate action. Our recommendations are not worth anything unless people implement them. And what you all are doing, moving forward on these things, we very much look forward to hearing about that and receiving documentation on what you're doing.